As the water hyacinth started to get caught up in our anchoring gear and that of the boats around us, it was time to leave Rockhampton in case we or our neighbours dragged anchor. With strong southeasterly winds predicted in the coming days from the direction we were exiting the Fitzroy River, we wanted to get out as soon as possible and had flagged a place on Curtis Island as safe haven from the oncoming blow. Our sail to the anchorage was a little faster than expected and the tide was still too low for us to safely cross the bar on arrival. So what is it, 2.4, what's 2.4 plus 0 0.7, 3.1? What time is it now? 11.20? Yep. I think we'll go in on 3 metres, that looks about right. Um, so just shy of one o'clock, so it's 11.30 now. We'll wait one and a half hours and that should give us, well, something under the keel anyway when we go over that bar. Just as long as it's not a repeat of like the Carnarvon Casino, I'll be happy. <laughs> Have you got any idea why they call it Yellow Patch? I'm not sure. So back there in the mangroves, I just thought I'd just have a, a quick look and I could see a hole and uh, when I popped in I could just see his, his head showing out. <laughs> so, he's soft eh, he's just, he's molted so this is the new crab here. So he's still soft shell crab. Alright Pasky, what are you holding in your hand? This is the lid from our 
storage tubs that are down the quarter berth of the boat. Uh, when we got here yesterday, I was like, I have to go down the sand hill <laughs> because it's really tall. How tall do you reckon it is? Um, 10 meters? Maybe, yeah, probably a bit more. 10, 12 meters. It's pretty steep. Um, it's sort of high tide now, so even if I keep sliding once I get to the bottom, I'll just land in the water. <laughs> I want you to keep sliding when you get to the bottom. Yeah, that would be cool. The following morning, the winds had started to increase to 30 knots. With our anchorage becoming shallower in the spring tides, and the prospect of being covered in yellow sand, we moved from Rural to a different spot, closer to the creek mouth. In areas close to towns and cities, popular fish like flathead, whiting and barramundi come under considerable fishing pressure, but stingrays pretty much maintain a healthy population wherever we go, so we prefer them. After spearing the ray, the fight involves breaking its suction to the bottom and preventing it from regaining it. Once we get the ray into shallow water, it's important to cut off the barb and to kill it quickly Alright, as we've been travelling around, we, we try and pick up as much as we can from um, you know, whatever Aboriginal people that we meet. And one of the things is hunting stingray with, with the spear, as you just saw. Stingrays aren't really exploited as food by a lot of people up here in the north, but we really like them. What do you think they're like, pasky crab? Yeah, yeah they taste like crab. Hmm. Alright, well that's what we think anyway. So this particular stingray that I've got here, without get going into too much detail, what do we know about it? We know that it's a male, okay, because it's got these two, what's called claspers. Females don't have that. And sometimes, you know, what, what makes up a ray as opposed to a shark? Because they are related. If you look on the top here, excuse the big gashes in the head, but I, I just want to knock its brain out as quickly as possible, stop it from suffering. But these holes just behind the eye, these are perculum. That is how you tell that you're looking at a ray, not a shark. Because you'll have, um, some people will see shovel nose sharks, but they're actually called shovel nose rays because they have these operculum. So just like any fish, they've got the gills on the underside. But of course, stingrays spend their, their life with their gills down under. So in order to draw oxygen rich blood in to pass through their gills, they have these holes on the top, a perculum. 
they can look around, they can draw in, they can remain semi-buried in the sand and still breathe quite happily. So that's the difference. If you're ever looking at something, you go, oh, I don't know whether it's a shark or a ray, does it have holes in behind its eyes that it can draw water in to breathe? That's a ray. It's not that it's got a sting on it or anything like that. That's the, that's the main difference. So this ray here, we're going to um, basically just make an incision down here, take the flesh off, take the other flesh off and skin it. And then we're going to hand over to Pascal and she's going to describe a delicious thing to do with your newly caught stingray. So what I'm going to do, like any fish before I process it, I'm going to turn on my, my deck hose and I'm going to grab this scrubbing brush and I'm going to scrub as much of the mucus off as I can. It just makes it easier to handle. Um, and there's a line of thinking that I'm coming around to that actually improves the flavour. If you can avoid that outer mucus getting on the meat, you get rid of that sort of that fishy smell and that fishy flavour. And these critters have a lot of slime on them as well. If you're a, if you're a happy yacht owner and you don't yet have a deck hose installed, I can recommend one. You'll be an even happier yacht owner. There's a lot we use ours for. Cleaning us, cleaning fish, cleaning the yacht. Alright, so there we go, from that relatively small stingray, got quite a bit of this meat, absolutely bone free, a little bit unusual to look at, um, but you know, really tasty and fairly, fairly straightforward affair. Yum, I think I might make some stingray cakes with it. Perfect. <laughs> Those Asian omelettes you made out of this was unbelievable. I'm sure the cakes will be just as good. <laughs> So that stingray that Troy filleted up earlier, we actually put that in the pressure cooker and brought it to pressure and then just turned it off. And what we've come out, we've put it in the fridge and what we've come up with is this crab-like sort of flesh. The same thing, I brought some potatoes to pressure in the pressure cooker and cooked them for about five minutes and then peeled them. So these are, this is gonna be the base for our stingray crab cakes. So I'm just dicing up some parsley, finally chopping up some parsley. Same, so gonna do some spring onion. I'm just gonna chop up two green chilies. Chop up the stingray mixture as well. Some lime juice in there. So I'm just going to bring it together as well with one egg. And we'll just add some salt. See if we can get a, a mixture together that we can make into cakes. Have a look. Mm. It's not even distinctly fishy. Mm. Really mild flavoured. Yeah, I've just gone with like kind of British style fish cake. Traditional mm. potato and parsley. Yeah, well the texture's such that British teeth would be able to handle that. Mm. <laughs> it's a bit mushy. <laughs> It's yummy. Mm. It's a tasty thing. I wonder if you put more egg in then it would be more together. I don't know. Yes. Maybe I just need to put another egg in. Definitely. 
Well, I'm about to check the engine oil. Smell? No, I'm not really going to taste it, am I? Um, because we are getting out of here and we're going to ride the ride the tide in through the narrows. There's a cyclone hanging around. I think I'm being paid back for making light of the weather comments back in a few videos ago. But we'll um, we'll shoot down the narrows and I think we'll stop in at Gladstone. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Sunny, sunny, beautiful Gladstone. Race put on hold for another few weeks. Yeah, but we've um, we've decided that we're going to come back, haven't we? In mm -hmm. winter time. Less cyclones, nicer weather. The people are nice. We're not gonna. We're not. We're just not gonna have a chance to really do it properly. So, in our ever-evolving scheme, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, just another one. Hmm. Just enjoying a nice cup of tea. We are anchored, we went through the Narrows last night on our way into Gladstone. How did you enjoy coming through the Narrows last night, Pascal? Uh, a little bit nerve wracking and as you said, slightly terrifying. I think most people are just naturally terrified about going through a, any sort of navigational challenge at night time. <laughs> uh, but here we are, we've come through the Narrows last night because it was uh, we had the right tide to do it. And we're just waiting for slack tide now. We're going to head into the marina because there is a cyclone coming and we just want to grab a few things. Uh, and then, yeah, if, if the cyclone does come across this way, then we'll go and scoot out to a creek and get some shelter there. But we're going to spend a couple of days in the marina first and then we'll make up our plan or we'll decide our plan once we know a bit more about what the, the low is doing. We'll have our plan made up for us, in other words. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yep, all right, let's go do it. All right, we've tied up Marul, we made it in safely. There's no paint missing on our or anyone else's boat. <laughs> so, um, I just want to have a quick chat about spring lines. We've used these, um, you know, these poly lines here. There's, there's hardly any stretch in these. The ideal lines for, for tie-ups would be nylon, wouldn't they? Because they've got some elasticity built in. It looks like um, their job is to stop the boat from going forward and backwards, and that's true. But also what they do is they do act like a spring. So they've got a fair bit of tension here at the moment and your breast lines are going horizontal so they'll they'll stop the boat from going too far but as whatever forces are acting on your boat these will increase in tension gradually like a spring and actually slow it down and then your breast lines will limit how far your boat will actually go if you don't have spring lines if you just have ropes going directly from the boat at 90 degrees straight to shore, they'll be slack until they're not. <laughs> so what will happen is the boat will go out, 
get to its breast lines, okay, those 90 degree lines, and then all of the load will suddenly come on and you'll get a real jarring motion. It's not as big a deal in here because it's a, it's a very well protected marina here in Gladstone Marina. Okay, they've done a great job and there's lots of cover. So the boat's not surging back and forward, but there are some places where you will actually get a bit of swell entering into some harbours. Um, and, you know, I've seen boats going BAM and just really shock loading their breast lines, okay, the lines that are going straight out from the boat. So the answer is to have springs and even your, your other lines, if you can run them at an angle, not at 90 degrees to the boat, you also get rid of a lot of that shock loading. Sometimes you want to have your boat, so if you imagine that this was the stern and you drive the boat backwards up to a, a wharf or whatever, again, instead of having lines just going straight out, you want them going from the corners diagonally and crossing each other like that to make a to make a spring and then if there's any surge they will they'll be quite gentle all right um, so that's it spring lines when you look at them some people set them up and they'll just go oh I, I only need them as tight as I need to have it to stop it going forward or backwards but they do actually serve a bit of a function where they act as a shock absorber so if you find that your boat is sort of really you know shock loading and jarring and you, <laughs> you worry about ripping your cleats out Maybe just have a think about the tension uh, relationship between your spring lines and your breast lines. Just ease off your breasties and maybe tighten up your springs and just see if that gets rid of some of your shock loading. It's something worth experimenting and thinking about if you're new to boating. Obviously old hands will be like, oh, oh I know all this stuff. But um, yeah, try it out because I've seen a few people that are, you know, springers, there's a lot of functions for them, but that's a really important one. They are actually a spring. Thanks for watching this week and if you enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up.